Ikari Company is a private military corporation. Its warmonger is Genzo Ikari, a former military leader who went rogue after personal tragedy and took many troops with him. According to Alper Sibili with the Bahram, the name was chosen by Genzo because Ikari means anger. They have no cultural touchstones like the Druze, no sense of honor like the Foreign Company, and no national ties like Starco. From their bases in the Human Edge system, they serve corporate security to the wealthy and brutal piracy to the unlucky. They don't care as long as they're getting paid. Colonel Genzo Ikari always has one hand on his katana sword. He hates good manners. His dark suit barely contains the rippling rage that courses through his body. He's so dark and edgy. The Colonel wasn't always like this. Genzo Ikari was born in Kuraimori on the planet Shentang. He joined the State Empire military and he rose through the ranks until he became a Bikugun Taisa, a colonel in the State Empire Army. He imparted his deep patriotism to his three children, and all of them followed in his footsteps. Wherever he was posted, from Yutang to Human Edge, Ikari viciously fought corruption and promoted ideals of true communism. Inevitably, Colonel Ikari went from glad dad to sad dad. All of his children were deployed during the neo-colonial war starting in 42 NC. His first son, Atsuo, died when his unit was overrun without reinforcements. His second son, Hiroki, was killed in a suicidal assault on a nomad position. In the early stages of the neo-colonial wars, commanders had no issue with wasting lives, especially Japanese lives. Systemic racism within the Yujingese High Command treated ethnic minorities as second-class citizens. This discrimination took the life of Ikari's last daughter, Asumi, during the Ariadnan commercial conflicts. A terribly planned operation against an Ariadnan stronghold went awry. In order to atone for the shame of her failure, Asumi committed ritual suicide with the assistance from Genzo. Weeks later, the colonel's wife died to sadness. Ikari was unable to gain any recompense for his losses. The emperor was a figurehead. JSA High Command were incompetent flatterers. The party would not tolerate him speaking out. And so, while at his wife's funeral, he came up with a plan to get revenge and remain a soldier. The colonel had spent years fighting corruption, so he knew better than anyone how to properly grift. All of that time in a human edge had put him in contact with some of the worst criminals in the system. He used this network to engage his vengeance over the course of many years. Officers that had ordered his children to their deaths were publicly shamed, humiliated, and quietly killed. Soldiering was Genzo's entire life, and he wanted to take his best followers with him. He dropped hints that he was planning on leaving the army and spent an obscene amount of time on an overcomplicated plan to help him escape with the men and materiel needed to form a private army. All of this was possible with the help of Mr. Daisho. Mr. Daisho is the appellation for the fixer and face of the Kari Company. According to Kendra McLuhan with the Black Hand, Daisho has a long history with the criminal underworld. He was an agent of the Yan Jing, translated as the Eyes. Working as the Communist Party's intelligence service meant that Daisho operated across the human sphere and gained countless insights into submondo cultures. He became the premier problem solver for the Yan Jing. For example, Daisho was tasked with dismantling a network of modified Los dealers on the Orthius ring of Jingqi Orbital. He did so, but the power vacuum allowed for the Hexahedron to make its own power play to take control. No problem. Daisho made a deal with the local Yakuza to keep Pan Oceania out. In the end, he shut down a smuggling operation, bent the Yakuza to his will, and protected his nation's interests abroad. Daisho eventually built up too many enemies inside the Yanjing and worked with Genzo to go rogue. Yu Kitahara, a ranking leader in the JSA, created a fake pirate base in the Human Edge system. Ikari was deployed with Yu as his logistics officer, and she made sure to take plenty of military materiel for an extended campaign. They never returned to base. Daisho is next spotted as Ikari's representative and fixer. He wears dark shades and an icy smile. He speaks softly without betraying emotion and gets an uncomfortably close when he wants to project power. Daisho knows every criminal group in Human Edge, which is how their bases on Novi Bangkok and Kibo Station were established. As you'd expect of a rogue intel agent, the Anjing have tried to have him killed. Not a single assassin would take them up on the offer though, and no bounty hunter has even taken the arrest contract. That's not to say that they don't try. One asset they have in place is Yanjing Agent Qin, a Wu Ming who has infiltrated the company. Of course, to kill Daisho, you'd have to find him first. Ikari Company operates out of the Human Edge system, which is the farthest system from Earth. Their headquarters is Station, or the Safe Rock. It's in Cloud 9, 
the Kordalewski cloud that surrounds the Helicon Belt in the interior of Human Edge. The Helicon Belt is the largest and most mineral-rich asteroid belt in the Human Edge system, but it's fairly close to the star, Astraeus, and is subject to frequent solar storms. Kordalewski clouds are dust clouds that form and snake their way around the Helicon Belt, and the largest cloud of the largest belt is Cloud 9. Seifuroku is safe because its location to outsiders is a mystery. The Kuame Gang used to have a pirate base in Cloud 9 before they disappeared, and some theorize that this became Safe Rock. There's a good chance that any meeting with Akati Company happens at a bar on Kibo Station. It's a rare mining platform that is owned and operated by Japan, and it responds directly to Tokyo. However, the local governing body is very dependent on outside corporations, and always defers to them when it comes to worker issues. Kibo orbits the gas giant Heraclitus and runs robotic drone platforms to siphon gases from the gas giant. During the Japanese uprising, Ikali Company defended stations like Yoiki and Kibo and guaranteed their independence after the settlement. Ikali's celebrity status did not last long. Ongoing labor issues led to Japanese corporations hiring Ikali to put down and settle any labor disputes. If Daisho won't meet you on Kibo Station, then you'd better buckle up and hire some muscle, because you have to visit Novi Mancock. The farthest belt in the farthest system is the Homeric Belt. The Homeric Belt is filled with plutoids, tiny dwarf planets that are subject to infuriating micrometeorite rains. It was on one of these plutoids that the Blinov Namsan Corporation built a tiny TCM mining operation. And when it was determined that the TCM was an insufficient purity, the Blinov Namsan Corporation abandoned the workers and the station. The Chao Fo took control. These Thai criminals came to blows with the Breitvai group, who had been hired as security and wanted it for themselves. Enter Ikati Company. They terminated Breitvai and earned a permanent and free port of call in Novi Bangkok. It's not much of a tourist spot. Nobody wants to be responsible for the asteroid, so it's a complete human jungle. It's rotten. The only security is what you make with your fists. Don't bother paying the guys to say they're cops. If anything, hire one of the duelists that are walking the street. In fact, the dueling rules on Novi Bangkok were created by Lucian Sforza himself, and rumor has it that Gunslinger Wild Bill got his start on the main strip. Don't venture off the main strip, though. There are dangerous things that stalk the old mine shafts. It wasn't too long ago that these things came to light, and the entire human sphere was paying attention to Novi Bangkok. Ikari operations are characterized by speed and force. They hit hard, with little concern for collateral damage or casualties. They are unsubtle and often excessive, but they know how to cover their tracks just enough that no one has been able to successfully prosecute them in concilium courts. Ikati Company units can be wild and unpredictable. Furious bikers, screaming Yuan Yuans, and opportunistic Bashi Bazooks all descend in a hail of fire. Nevertheless, they often have a core of hardened and well-equipped soldiers who defected alongside Colonel Ikati. These Ronin warriors are the true terror in any operations. They include faces like Sansoju Nikeda, a Keisotsu defector, and Takashi Taru, a low-class samurai from the Tanko Zen Senbutai, who has an addiction to liquor and companionship. These forces often include heavy Wu Ming from the bad old days, supplemented by meticulous Alpha Sid and Libertos who are eager for a cut of the action. For a Kati company, no job is off the table, even if they're off the books. The most visible example of Akati Company's cruelty was the Helicon Miners Revolt on Hesiod 5. The creatively named Mines Corp hired a number of miners and workers from Corregidor to work on Asteroid Belt. A perfect storm of CMEs forced the facility to halt all exterior work, and the workers were forced to hunker down and ride out the storm. Another corporation, War Tech Works, was working double shifts at the time to build the Theta unit for Bureau Aegis. Without the raw materials from Hesiod 5, they could lose their O-12 contract. Wartech Works pressured Mines Corp to pressure the Corregidorans back to work. Radiation was so bad that miners were dying of radiation poisoning by the ends of their shifts. Remotes melted into slag. When the workers wouldn't work, Mines Corp hired a Cotty company to force them to work. Corregidor deployed a covert ops team to organize a riot and stop the forced work. The Akati Company mercenaries were almost completely destroyed, but Mines Corp was able to bring Pan-Oceanian military assets to defend what they saw as a violent takeover by a rival company. By the time Tunguskan lawyers enforced a ceasefire through O-12, 75% of the miners and 65% of the commandos were dead. Almost all of the Akati Company troops had been killed by the nomads. 
The slain miners' families received compensation, and the Helicon regulations were put in place to prevent similar tragedies. But the blood was still spilled. The Cotty Company has a shoot-on-site policy for nomad fighters in general, and Corregidor in particular. The Helicon Miner Revolt wasn't even the worst offense committed by the Akati Company. At times, they've taken to piracy, using a ship called the Kamatachi Maru. The CS Aigir was a corporate Hakislamite freighter. The Akati Company sacked the freighter, stole its supplies, and then blew it up with the crew on board. This opening allowed Pharmacorp to greatly expand its business operations in Hakislamite space. There is evidence to suggest that Pan Oceania leaked the flight path of the Aigir to Akati Company, but there were never any witnesses, and investigations bogged down in the courts. The worst rumors of all include Akati Company's deployment on Paradiso. The Magna Obra Corporation hired Genzo's men to provide security from a large Morat assault. The goal was to keep the Morats busy while corporate staff from the Magna Obra Corporation pulled out and took their research material with them. That meant protecting the employees, and it also meant that the masses of civilians attempting to commandeer the corporate transports had to be dealt with. What happened next is not well documented. Most sources conclude that Akati Company killed any fleeing refugees that attempted to use corporate-owned transports. Most of the other refugees were killed when the Morat Supremacy bombed North Australia. The Black Hand Intelligence Service suggests that Akati Company actually killed all the refugees themselves, looted much of North Australia, and then bombed the area to cover their tracks. Either way, Akati Company are an irredeemable bunch. Ikati Company seems like the army you play when you own a bunch of JSA and want a more brute force approach. Maybe there are people who got into Ikati without owning JSA first. I don't know. Frankly, I don't want to know. Ikati are a brute force tool. They have access to lots of things for killing. They got cheap killing and they got expensive killing. They showed up early into M3's life cycle with the Uprising book, which is where much of their lore is sourced. They do murder. They do murder with stealth and holo projector and also guns. They don't push for buttons very well. Uh, I don't play them. Do you? Ikati Company are bad guys. They're led by a sad dad. To be honest, I think they're kind of one note. But it shouldn't be that surprising. Not all villains are going to be interesting. Sometimes you want a bunch of bad guys who went rogue. And sometimes you want to play as a bunch of angry ronin and do violence. This is the end of the video. If you've been waiting for Ariadna, wait no further. Next time, we visit the Helio system. Please comment on which of the Ariadna states you'd like to learn about the most. That is all. Goodbye.